Are you guys sick of me playing with toys yet? Okay, well, I promise I will not be playing with toys in this video. I will, however, be playing with cards. Bar Weep, Grana Weep, Ninibon. For those who don't know what I just said, that was the universal greeting. First seen by mankind in the 1986 animated classic, The Transformers, The Movie. If you're like me, then you probably rate The Transformers The Movie pretty highly in your list of all-time favourite animated movies. And if you're anything like me, you probably rate Starscream as one of your favourite characters in all of pop culture. So, incidentally, I wanted to show you something. This. This is King Starscream. He is from the second wave of the Transformers TCCG. I love this card. I love everything about it. Look at him. He's mugging it up like a boss in his gaudy yet regal golden crown. His red, blue and white classic Seeker body just looking absolutely stunning. And it's pretty good on the other side as well. The art for both the jet mode and the robot is awesome. But come on, look at this face. You try telling this face that he's bad at comedy. It's not just King Starscream here. Pretty much all the artwork for all the cards in the Transformers TCCG look awesome. Like the design of the nameplates and the text boxes and the stats lets the artwork breathe a little and makes it look like the more action-packed artwork is about to burst right off the card itself. Unfortunately, I haven't actually had a chance to play the game for the Transformers TCCG yet, which is a bit of a bummer, but as it stands, the cards are just too cool for me not to want to get some. And by some, I mean a whole 30 packs. Okay. So, in this lovely storefront display box, which I have no idea what I'm going to do with it when I'm done with this video because I don't want to get rid of it, but I don't know where to put it or what to use it for after this. In this lovely storefront box, there are 30 packs of the first wave of the Transformers TCCG, and I'm going to open them, all 30 of them, today. This will probably be a two-part video. So, before we get started, I'm going to give you some numbers. There are 40 character cards in total in the first wave of the Transformers TCCG. I have 11. There are 30 packs here. There is one character card per pack. Ideally, I want at least 29 of these packs to not be duplicates. Realistically, all 30 of them are probably going to have thrust in them. Alright, enough stalling. Let's get to the fun part. Okay, I'm going to put this down here. I don't know what all the character cards in this wave are. I mean, I know the ones I've got cards of already. Like, I can make assumptions based on those. Like, I've got Swoop, so I'm going to assume that the other four Dinobots are in this as well. All right, pack number one. Come on, be a good one. Be a good one. Am I opening this card pack right? Is this how people usually open card packs, or is there a way that other people do it? Should I, like, get scissors or something? It's... Ooh! Ooh, Bombshell! I don't have Bombshell! One down. Perfect. Okay, so what are we looking at here? Even the most bland of the artwork still looks fantastic. Like, Bombshell isn't doing much in this, but he just looks really intimidating. I've always liked Bombshell because he's such a sadist and he has mind control powers. That is so horrible. It's great. I love it. But I think I've got Kickback as well, so now all I need is Shrapnel, and I've got the three basic Insecticons. What design is this? This is very, uh, it's very full of Cybertron, isn't it? It's just a little too tanky. He's just a bit too built for it to be his original G1 self. And I don't believe the G1 version had carapace or legs on his upper arms like that. He does look like he's built like a tank. And given that he turns into what I think is a Hercules beetle, if I'm not mistaken, it makes sense. Just gonna gently slot him into a plastic sleeve. Fantastic. One down, we're off to a good start. I'll get to the battle cards later. I'm gonna have such a pile up of rubbish by the end of this. Pack number two, let's go. I feel like I should be saying more things while I struggle to open these card packs. And it's Skywarp, which I believe I already have a Skywarp. Two seconds. Ah, yes, so I do indeed already have a Skywarp. So it's a bit unfortunate. We've already run into a duplicate, but it's fine. I'm fine. I will survive. I guess I should say something about Skywarp while he's here. Uh, and that is, he's awesome. Everything about him. 
He's a seeker, he's got the awesome seeker design, and he's black and purple with some yellow highlight and red eyes. He can teleport. The fact that he's a black and purple fighter jet that can teleport is cool. He's also kind of adult and a prankster, which is so lame that I have to love it. I just realized I say I love things a lot on this channel, don't I? All right, pack number three. Dispose of the rubbish, try not to look at the card. Ah, swoop. All right, cool. So we are going to not get the whole set today because I've already got swoop. You never thought I'd be sad to see swoop. All right, I'm not sad to see Swoop. I love Swoop. Swoop has always kind of been my favorite of the Dinobots. Like Grimlock is of course probably the coolest because he's both the leader and a T-Rex. But Swoop, he's the likable one. His role in the Dinobots other than being the only flyer is that he's not a jerk. Okay, it looks like his toy design. So the original G1 cartoon had Swoop with a blue torso, which made him quite different from the other Dinobots. He also didn't have the visor in the cartoon, and he has a visor here, and I think that's based off the toy. Like, to me, Swoop will always have a blue torso and eyes, but that's not to say this is a bad design for him either. I don't know. Either design's fine. And again, the card art, man. I mean, the robot mode's awesome, but he's doing a bombing run in his pterodactyl mode. That looks so cool. Card number four. Ooh, hey, awesome. I didn't think Inferno was gonna get a card in this wave. I mean, Demolisher's got a card in this wave, so that kind of just opens up the chance for anyone to have a card. Look at that. Oh, it's so cool. The fire in the background, that looks really wicked. And in his vehicle mode, as a fire truck, he is putting out fires. I love Inferno. He's a total cowboy, and I don't just say that because he's got the southern accent. I also say that because he's such a danger junkie, like, he wants to be involved in the action, shooting down the bad guys, but because his job of search and rescue and firefighting comes first, he doesn't always get that chance. He's also a sweetheart. His relationship with Red Alert is just genuinely lovely, and the Auto Berserk episode from the second season is one of my favorite episodes of the whole G1 cartoon. His design might also be one of my favorite fire truck transformer designs. Like, it's chunky and straightforward, but it's got small details like the wings and the back of his head, which I don't know what's going on there, but I love them. Literally, his hand got lost in translation. The reference pictures the design team had to use wasn't enough to accurately convey what was going on with the toys to the design team. So the designs for the characters in the cartoon are kind of not all there when you compare them to the toys, including Inferno's hand, which the toy has a hand, but the picture they had of the toy had him with a nozzle accessory over the hand, or in place of the hand, I believe. They just sort of thought, hey, Inferno has one hand. His hand was literally lost in translation. All right, what are we up to? Card number five, we're only up to number five. 25 more to go after this one. Card number five. Oh, oh, that's so cool, it's Deadlock. We got an IDW original here, ladies and gentlemen. Deadlock is genuinely an incredibly vicious and vile Decepticon. I think he got ousted or something happened that led him to leaving the Decepticons and he found like a, a monastery of monks or like a religious sect or something like that. He became a warrior following their ways, changed his name to Drift, got a new swanky red and white color scheme and eventually ended up joining the Autobots. He's kind of a great example of like faction switching other than the movies where I don't think they ever made mention of Deadlock or like Drift's past allegiances unless I wasn't paying attention. Why would I pay attention watching a Michael Bay movie? I'm pretty sure every version of Drift has had a Deadlock phase. Like Cyberverse, there's a toy for Deadlock that actually came out before Drift. I never thought we would have a mainstream toy aimed at children of Deadlock, but here we are. There's only so many times I can say it, but the art is so fantastic. Compared to the other character cards we've seen so far, where things are on fire or exploding, this is actually quite calm, quite soothing, but there's a darkness to it. And, you know, the robot mode is awesome, but look at how slick this vehicle mode is. It looks contained, but intense, which is kind of a great way to describe deadlock slash drift in general. Alright, I don't have deadlock, I didn't even realize he was in this wave, so... That's another new one, and I'm so happy to see him. All right, I think we're up to pack six. So far we've gone Decepticon, Decepticon, Autobot, Autobot. I wonder if that pattern's gonna hold up. Come on, shrapnel. Oh, Starscream. All right, I have the Starscream from wave one, but, so this is the new one I just 
open. And this is the one I already had. It's two completely separate cards, like, they got separate numbering and everything. One's Starscream, Scheming Second in Command, the other one is Starscream, Air Commander. I have three Starscreams now, like, look at that, I've got three Starscreams and they're all completely different Starscreams. That's kind of neat, I like that. I'm certainly not complaining. He's also a new card, which is good. Pack number seven. Oh, who's that? That's... Oh, that's Darkmount! What's his... What's he called? He, uh, Straxus. Right, so Darkmount, I believe, is a name they're using for him because they can't use the name Straxus. Darkmount was the name of his base. I believe he's a character from the old G1 comics, if I'm not mistaken. Look at the way this guy looks, like his scythe axing. His face just looks so menacing. When I was first really getting the Transformers over a decade ago, they released a Generations figure for Darkmount. I remember just not knowing who he was at the time and not really bothering to research, but since then, and now I've gotten back into Transformers, I have looked into him. He's just a terrible bot, isn't he? He's just horrible. Cruel Overlord is correct. And he's got the design of a Cruel Overlord. Like, he looks just vicious. I mean, that's his robot mode. That's his tank mode. He just looks unforgiving. You don't want this guy to be your enemy, but you don't really want him to be your friend either. Just a big, dangerous Decepticon. The one who I believe tried and got very close to successfully overthrowing Megatron. I believe he died like three times. We're actually doing pretty well. We've only gotten two duplicates so far. And now that I've said that, watch as every other pack is gonna have thrust. Card number eight, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, Bumblebee. All right, I've got Bumblebee. It's fine. It's it's his. It's one of his better updated G1 designs. Like, I do like how they have the two black stripes that call to his movie version and kind of bring home the whole Bumblebee name a bit more. I I do like the alt mode. It's not a Volkswagen Beetle, and I'm not someone who thinks he should exclusively be a Volkswagen Beetle, but he should always be a little compact car like this. It's what makes him charming. Yeah, it's Bumblebee. I can't be mad at Bumblebee, even if I kind of really didn't want to see him today. At least not in these packs of cards. Pack 9. Oh yes, we got Wheeljack! G1 Wheeljack is one of my favourite characters in the whole franchise. Like, he's just so fun. The G1 cartoon is very much of its time. The stories, the characters, the art style, the animation, and of course the comedy are all very much 80s cartoon for children. So very rarely does the G1 cartoon make me properly laugh, but Wheeljack consistently found a way to make me smile and the one time I ever openly laughed at any G1 episode was when Wheeljack pulled out this big rocket launcher like he was gonna shoot up some Decepticons <laughs> and he just... <laughs> it just blows up. Like, it, just, it just explodes. He's done himself in. It was like the only thing in the original cartoon that ever made me laugh and Wheeljack just has a character that's so easy to like which is great because he's also got such a unique design. The completely white body with the green and red paint decals but also the wings on the back and most notably his head design with the light bars that when he would talk they would like light up and that design went so well with the character of Tech Genius who's kind of a danger because he's also a little loopy and he just also turned into probably one of the coolest cars in the cartoon. I believe it was some kind of Lancia. Actually if I'm not mistaken I'm pretty sure the car he turns into is a specific Lancia like there's one of them that was a race car. There was actually two of them sorry. One was the white green and red one that Wheeljack turns into and the other one was like a white and red one that was sponsored by Marlboro. And they would make a transformer out of that one as well, called Exhaust. And if you want to look into just one of the weirdest legal battles surrounding a toy that's ever existed, look into what happened when Takara made the, the Masterpiece Exhaust figure. That's just, that's a story and a half. Actually, I've got a Masterpiece Exhaust. I might do a video about him later. I believe we're up to pack number 10. We're not doing bad on duplicates here, actually. We've only got three. Ah, oh. <laughs> I just had to say it, didn't I? Well, we have to do something to make sure this video isn't two hours long, right? It could be worse. It could be three wheelies. It could be three Revenge of the Fallen wheelies. Oh, that's a nightmare. Number 11. I think what we'll do is we'll go up to 15. Ooh, ooh, ooh! Sergeant Cup. All right. Wait, are we looking at Titan's Return, or is that his universe design?
Look at you being a badass old war vet. Just the way we want you, Cup. Cup kind of took over the, the old war weary Autobot role from Ironhide. Like, Ironhide dies at the start of the movie and then Cup debuts a couple scenes later. I do wish we had just even five minutes of Cup and Ironhide in the same room just telling an old war story to Hot Rod about how they, like, were once trapped in a base surrounded by, like, a hundred Decepticons and all they had between them was a broken torch and a gun with two bullets in it and they made it out alive. Cup's voice was nice, wasn't it? Well, the dust was really thick. And then this gigantic idiot. He was rough and gravelly and aged, but I feel like I could probably sit down and listen to him talk and tell his stories all day long. Pack number 12. All right, who have we got? Hey, we've got Hound. I love Hound, he's, he's great, isn't he? Like, a little perturbed with what they had done with Hound from the movie. Like, I don't mind the character. I think he's actually one of the better Bayverse characters, but it's just, he's named Hound and and I think Hound, I think like a gentle soul who loves nature and makes holograms, not the heavy from Team Fortress 2. <laughs> but I guess part of that sort of has to do with the fact that Hound had a decently prominent role throughout Season 1. The moment I got Earthrise Cliffjumper, I pulled my Siege Hound from off the shelf and I was just posing them around with each other. That image of those two together is just burnt into my brain and always will be. I wonder if there's a Cliffjumper in this wave. I really hope there is. That'd be lovely. I'm pretty sure this is, again, based off his universe design. The one that came with a Ravage because of a scene that they had together in the G1 cartoon. I remember that just being like one I really wanted but never got. The Hound looks so cool, like I loved the vibrancy of his colours. The original Classics and Universe stuff was really good, wasn't it? Uh, I think this is number 14. And... I don't want to be sad to see a Bumblebee. He and Swoop are like some of my favourite characters because they're so likeable, but it's sad. It's sad that I'm sad to see a Swoop, or sad that I'm sad to see a Bumblebee. I don't want to be sad to see either of them. I want to see them and go, hey, it's you, I like you, and like give them a big hug. We only got 13 here. I miscounted, I was wrong, we got two more to go. All right, so this is 14. This is the second to last for the night. All right. Uh, barrage. I've got two barrages. It was cool when I first got them. Like, I was so blown away by the fact that they've done barrage in this. That's cool. I mean, the Deluxe Insecticons have great designs and these cards really bring them out. Striking colors for these big insect robot monsters. I, I can't be too mad at them. I shouldn't be. I should be happy to know that the Deluxe Insecticons are getting some love. I really hope this isn't a duplicate because that would be such a, a sour note to go out on for this video. Like, it'd be like the end of Infinity War. It's like everything feels so down and dour and depressing. You know, there's hope for the future. So even if this is a duplicate, final card. <sighs> All right, so we got seven duplicates. Eight originals. So I think I've got 19 of these cards now. That's that's not bad. Oh, but we have all these. I'm just gonna rip these open real quick and see if we got any new ones that I don't have in this uh, in this little uh, binder here. All right. So I finally finished sorting out the battle cards. Uh, these are all the duplicates that I have from just those 15 packs. I've actually got more duplicates sitting in my room from previous packs that I bought. And I also have this binder here, which, as you can see, page one is actually fully filled out. And it's not the only one. There are several pages for wave one that have been fully filled out. I only have 11 cards left to get. But that's fantastic, right? Yeah, I have 21 character cards left to get and only 15 packs. I mean, I didn't think there was any chance I was going to get all 29 character cards I needed from that set. But we're not going to get through life by looking at the negatives. Let's look at the positives. I got quite a few cards that I quite liked from just these first 15 alone and I'm super excited to see what I get from the next 15 cards. Regardless, I'm the Howitzer Hound. I thank you for joining me today and I hope to see you very very soon.